I covered round relays in the past, but it is very important to understand them well because they are found in a variety of model controllers to include switchboards. In this video, first I demonstrate how both the single coil spring loaded and the double coil push and pull relay works. Then I will demonstrate how will you use a schematic on a complex circuit where multi-layer round relay switches are used. Before we continue, remember, if you find the material in this video too technical, please watch earlier videos where I cover basic electrical knowledge. Keep in mind that the first 28 videos are best understood if you follow their sequential order. Now, back to our video. Quickly, I like to cover these round relay switches, at least that's what I call them. This one over here, I like it uh, because uh, it has two layers. This is a two layer one. So these switches at the bottom doesn't have anything to do with the ones on top of it. However, they work identical. Now, uh, remember that uh, this over here, it's, uh, this is the common. So here, echo will be the common. And this is the normally open. And this is the normally closed. In a moment, I'll show you what that means with the multimeter. And then uh, we got two coils, coil to the right, coil to the left. This one over here happens to be a 28 volt one. If you can see it, 28 volts are right there. So because of that, I went ahead and arranged the batteries over here. As you can see, these are six volt batteries connected in series. So a total of four, I'm getting 24 volts out of it. That's enough to energize this guy. So uh, if you pay attention here to the center, the way to shift it one way is, well, uh, over here, I'm gonna take it, touch it, see how it is switched. And what is very important that I wanna notice is that it stays in whatever position I shift it. So, um, right now, if I re-energize back over here, it's not gonna do it's not gonna do anything. If anything, actually, it's gonna damage the coil. But once again, I'm gonna do it over here, and it's gonna shift. And I'm gonna do back over here, and it's going to shift. Now let's see what how does it look with the multimeter. You know, the multimeter. We're gonna uh, if, if you notice over here, one side is already connected to the common. Okay. Now in this case, happens to be echo. Echo to F. In this case, uh, it is shorted so right now this and this is shorted and this the center which is echo to uh, delta over here it is open uh, it fell off but i'm just gonna go ahead and put it back on and so we got shorted over here let's see what happens when i when i cause this to shift here it goes oh wait here it goes it shifted so see how it opened now the common to uh, the other side is the one that shorted notice that if i touch the bottom one the bottom layer nothing there is no the multimeter doesn't do any changes because the top layer Ooh. doesn't have anything to do with the bottom layer so now if i go to the bottom layer over here so now the bottom one over here is acting the same way as the other one so the bottom one happens to be shorter because remember e and d of the top layer was shorter so therefore these two switches are shorted if i want to shift it again now i have to energize this earlier I think I energized that side so I'm gonna energize it in this side over here a shift now it's the open and if I go over here this should be shorted just as the same as if I were to do between that one and that one yeah and all the other switches they work identical the same way okay now I want to bring another switch over here so this one over here, as you can see, only has one set of coils, okay? That's mean this one is a spring loaded. So every time that I force it to go one way uh, with the screwdriver, it will come back on. But I will do that in a moment. The switches is the same way as the other ones, so I'm not gonna put a multimeter on them, but this one is only a one layer, okay? So now I'm gonna energize it. Now for this one over here, I need to use a different power supply. So here it goes. Get it close to here. And here it goes. When it's energized, it holds, and as soon as I let go, it opens. What that means is that right now, if I put a multimeter between E and F, in this case, this is gonna be shorted, zero ohms, and then this is gonna be open. As soon as I energize this, now that it's energized, E and F will be open, and E and D will be shorted and all the other switches, they work the same way. Keep in mind that in the field, you can always stick a screwdriver over here and then force it to, so that you can do for testing and sometimes even for troubleshooting. But be aware that as soon as you shift it, uh, you're gonna be sending signals if it happens to be energized. 
Now a little recap. Remember, these are the coils, okay, is what actually activate them. And if you were to look at the schematic coils, we'll always look um, round, like that one over there. And the switches associated with that, uh, like this one over here, this normally open, it will be, well, connected to the normally opens. Now, this is a random schematic, but uh, if it was uh, for relays, like this one over here, you would have to have some type of letters, A and B, probably, uh, across here so in that way you know that those ca this this normally open cable it goes across a and b or it could say something like d and f which is still normally open or g and h or if you see not touching k and l To finish the talk about round relay switches, I got the schematic over here that belongs to the, all of this circuit. So let's say that this particular uh, relay, K16, needs to be energized. Well, whenever uh, it gets energized, it will be uh, one and two, which is the coil. If you keep it in mind, well, that relay is over here. See in the back over there, it's, uh, it says K16. And one and two would be all the way back over there. That, so whenever that gets energized, these, uh, it will rotate and then these associated uh, contacts will uh, change. Now, I want to bring special attention about the multi-layer. So for this particular one, if you notice over here, K2, this is uh, actually a, there's a type on the schematic, so it's actually a K2, a, they label it K3, but... Uh, it says that, see this one over here? This one over here represents the first layer. So when I'm gonna be looking at, at taking co uh, uh, continuity readings of L and K for this particular circuit, I need to just focus on K2. Now, this is K4, that's K3, K2 is over here. Unfortunately, this, the label is really hard to read, but I will have to actually get my multimeter all the way See how it's multi-layers all the way to the first layer over there. And then that's when I'll be looking for the, the labels L and K to be able to like read it. So uh, definitely L and K, um, should it? I got L and K over here. So we put in my multimeter leads uh, between here and here, but not of this layer, but of the first layer over there to be able to uh, read a particular set of contacts. And what I mean, that particular set of contacts will be L and K. Same will be the story if I wanted to do a B and A, and the other one looks like a C and D. Now, notice over here um, how they put these data lines. That's to indicate that all these three switches, they belong to K3 and they are all part of one, uh, or the first layer. In this other one, uh, they got a K5. Uh, K5 is... So K5 is the one all the way at the top, and yeah, I just take my word for it. But uh, what I wanted to really point out is that in here, the manufacturer was really careful to put these data lines. I noticed like over here, it doesn't have anything um, labeled. So therefore, the assumption is that K5, it would be all of these uh, contacts would be associated with K5. So this would be uh, E and F, E and D of the first layer, uh, E and F of the first layer, H and G and H and J of the first layer and K and L as you can see of the first layer. If I wanted for example to energize this uh, con this uh, K3 over here and then I had to go to K4 and this will be the sixth layer. So that's how you uh, take care of the layers. Now the same works for switches. And what I mean by that is like, look, this is not a K, this is an S10, this is a switch, okay? And this is a multi-layer switch. So this layer, like for example, if I wanted to uh, look at this particular circuit over here, so then I had to go to layer 16, okay? And I sample either H and G or H and I, depending on whatever I'll be looking. So how will this switch look like? This is, uh, if you see the name over here, is the local remote. So um, this is my local remote uh, in the front. Now I'm gonna show you the back of it. And as you can see, it has multiple layers. Always uh, keep in mind the layers are well labeled. Like you see over there, that's 12, uh, well, that's 11, 12, layer 14. And the letters, uh, well, uh, all the letters are also there, A, B, and C. And, and if this one is A, all of them are in that row are, are A. I think for the ones that we were looking for in a moment ago, I think, it, uh, I don't remember now, 
but I think it was uh, H and maybe I or G. So you see that over there. Let's look, let's take a look at another switch over here. So switch uh, uh, 13, uh, not 14. Uh, that was a typo over there. And what it is is like a, this is for the to energize a post type breaker. And whenever uh, uh, this contact over here closes locally, then uh, you send a signal to energize uh, eventually this guy over here, and then that will close the magic of that post type breaker to close. But anyway, the talk was about uh, S13. So uh, S13. Uh, right here I got it right there and as you can see uh, self-explanatory all the contacts over here are well labeled and that's pretty much how you associate